Hi, hello. Hi. All right. <laughs> Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Tom's Trains and Things. For the past week, I've had a little helper here. This is my granddaughter, Maddie. Say hello. Hi. She's been running the, the engines all over the place. And she's doing a really good job at it. She learned a Digitrax uh, controller. She's uh, operating two locomotives and uh, operating the switches. This week we're going to talk about putting switches on my uh, drop-down uh, table that I uh, installed. I uh, followed the uh, instructions on uh, Model Railroader magazine up to a certain point, but the way they had it, they had the uh, switches hidden underneath the wood, so I'm going to put them on the outside because I don't trust the switches. I've had a lot of experience with them and uh, they tend to uh, uh, malfunction a lot, so I'm going to put them on the outside and I'm going to show you how to do it. I hope you enjoy it. There you go. All right. <laughs> We're going to be installing uh, switches for my drop down bridge. Here is the bridge right here. I, uh, I followed the instructions on Model Railroaders uh, July 1990 issue. Um, close, but not very close. I made some changes to it, and um, in that, they put the uh, the switches on the inside so you would have to uh, actually disassemble everything on both sides just to get to the switch if it had a problem but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mount a switch right here on this side like that so when the bridge comes up it'll contact the little arm on there and it'll open up the switch Okay, and on this other side, I'm going to place it over here. I don't know if you can see it. I'll, I'll show a better picture of it later. But I'll put it over here so when the, when the bridge comes up, it'll, it'll contact the uh, arm and uh, it'll open up the contacts on that. I'm going to mount the switch right here. Um, I got these switches from Radio Shack. It comes one in a package a single pull double throw switch with a lever. It's made by Zippy. Okay, I'm not familiar with this brand, but uh, I've worked with switches similar to this. They were micro switches and they had an arm on it similar to this, but it was longer. Some of it had like a little roller up on the top. The other one just came out and, and made a 90 degree turn. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mount it right here like this right in this little slot right here so when the bridge comes up it'll it'll hit this uh, wiper right here this little arm and it'll open up the switch now this is a a, a single pole double throw and uh, for uh, for the ones that don't know you know what that is um, there's a common there's a normally closed contact and a normally open contact on it. This one right here on this side is the common. The center one is the normally open and then the one on the left is normally closed. And what that means is if you put your meter between the common and the normally closed right now you would get continuity but as soon as you flip the switch it's going to be open so you'll break the circuit right there and just the opposite with this with the normally open one right now there you know with between the common and the normally open contact there is no continuity but as soon as the uh, the lever comes down and uh, operates the, the uh, little switch on there It'll, it'll change it from normally open to normally closed and you'll have continuity. We're going to hook the wires up on here on the, on the common and on the normally open. So when the bridge is down, we won't have any continuity. So as soon as you bring the bridge up, it'll, 
move the arm and we'll have continuity between these two uh, terminals right here. My feeds for this track approaching the, uh, the, the bridge is uh, right here and I have a gap that's back on the other side of this little bridge right here. It's it's about another uh, uh, two foot past that, and I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it like that. I have a this is a reversing uh, circuit right here, so I already have a gap back there. So what what I'm gonna do is when the bridge is down, I'm gonna kill all these tracks right here. So what that means is right here with where the leads are, I'm gonna have to run two wires from where the switch is back to here and then cut one of these wires here and then put one of the wires on the track and then one of the wires on the feed so it'll it'll break the circuit for this area right here okay here's the here's the feed wires for for the track that I'm talking about I have an extra set of wires here because I had an, uh, another track coming up there and I just disconnected but I left the wires on there so what I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take uh, the white one and for this one track here and I'm gonna take this apart and I'm, then the uh, take this apart right here okay and then I'm gonna run the wires from the switch and one wire is gonna go directly up to the track and the other wire is going to go to the feed so it so whenever the bridge is down it's going to break the circuit and uh, you won't have any power on the tracks. I'm going to mount these switches with a a, uh, a number four screw. It's a pan head screw and the reason I'm going to do that is, is and mount it into the wood. I'm not going to use a wood screw because on a wood screw you have the, 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 the tapered area on the you know on the thread side and so this is going to be flat up against the uh, up against the switch and what I had to do was uh, you can see I filed out one one of the holes already the holes on there were a little bit too small for a number four and instead of going and getting a smaller screw um, I have a lot of number fours. I got uh, four by half and four by three quarter to mount other small items on the layout. Uh, okay, so what I had to do is I filed out one already to, so the, the screw would fit in it. I'll just have to file out the other one to get it to, get it to work. But before I mount this on here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna solder the, the two wires on here and run it down in the back onto a little uh, circuit board. So, you know, it, I have the connection right there and I'll run the two wires back over to the, the, uh, the terminals back on the uh, feed wires. All right, I have both uh, holes filed big enough to uh, take a number four screw. And uh, I'll show you right there. And it's it's a nice snug fit, but not too too snug to where it's gonna distort it. But uh, and these are half inch long, so that you know that's long enough to get down into the wood and give us enough grip to to hold this in place. Um, I want to talk about the, the files. It's always good to have a, a good set of files. Uh, I had I got had these since uh, 1971. I was issued these when I was in the Air Force, and uh, I've managed to hold on to them. I, I lost a couple and broke a few, but uh, um, and I have a couple of different sets. But um, it's uh, always good to have a small set of files like this to when you're working on your railroad. You know, Radio Shack used to be a really good store to get uh, electronic parts in there. I used to go in there all the time and get stuff, but now when you go in there, you know, they should be calling it uh, Cell Phone Central because, you know, it's, it's nothing but another uh, uh, cell phone store. And uh, the electronic parts are, are uh, 
uh, condensed down into a little square cube with drawers in it and they have um, a minimal amount of parts in there that uh, really uh, you can't do anything with I mean yeah, I mean you, if you you can do some you know, some projects but uh, I mean it's limited so uh, you know why call it Radio Shack anymore this is not a full-fledged tutorial on um, soldering so I'll just go over this real quickly I, I have some solder uh, some flux there and I'm just putting them on the on the uh, terminals that I'm going to uh, be soldering the wire on okay and I'm going to put a little bit on the wire too uh, since this is solid wire I'm not going to uh, uh, tin it usually when you tin it uh, it's just to make it a little bit stiffer and to, and to get uh, it uh, get some solder flow on, on the uh, wire itself but what I'm going to do there's all kind of different ways of doing this and the way I do it I just put a little bit on the tip tip of the soldering iron and I'll put the wire in here I'll do the center one first and get that out of the way and I'll kind of get it off to the side and we could uh, break you know cut this off afterwards but I'll just there's uh, flux on there so it's going to hold it on there so get it hot in there hold it and then you're good to go with that okay once I get the other wire on there I'll just uh, snip off the excess I'll just dip this in there dip that in there I have a wet sponge and then a paper towel and I also have a, um, a wire brush to clean the soldering iron when I'm finished but usually you know just a little bit of solder there's flux on the on the terminal I'll turn this to where I could get a good handle on it and then put this in the hole and then apply the solder with the soldering iron. Okay, and there we go. It's always a good idea to have a, a paper towel handy uh, on here. Okay, this is a wet sponge. Okay, you can get these at Radio Shack. Um, this soldering iron right here, I think it's only like a See, it's a 15 watt, 33 watt, and yeah, it's a 33 watt. But I have a small, small tip on it on the end of it. They make a lot uh, larger tips, but uh, I find the smaller tips are easier to use. Okay, now let's stick this back up in here. Now, once 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 we got the, this all good and tight. I'll clean this off with some alcohol and then I'll, uh, I'll clip these off. The same tool I used for the flux. I'll just dip it in a little bit of alcohol, clean the flux off of it. I mean, it, it, these are little uh, micro applicators and, uh, you know, once you uh, use glue, you know, use it for glue or whatever you're using it for, it gets too hard for that, for that purpose, so you could always use it for something else. But, uh, you know, I'll just take it and then and I'll just hit this over here to get the excess flux off of the off of the wires there you go all right so I'll, I'll cut them off um, what I'm going to show you now here is uh, wire strippers I didn't show you me stripping the wires but uh, you can get these at you know Home Depot or Lowe's but uh, make sure you get the ones that uh, this one goes down to a number 26 gauge wire so you probably never get down to 26, probably 24 is probably the smallest you'll get unless you're uh, doing uh, the, the really, really small uh, LEDs and you have to like strip off the little excess uh, uh, coating that's on the wire. But uh, 
I mean, it, I mean, this is a good thing to have. I have a couple of different sets. I have this set here, and then I have another set because this one only goes up to 16, uh, uh, large as a 16 gauge, and I have another set that goes uh, from I think from uh, from 18 down to uh, 10 gauge. So you know, it's always a good idea to have a couple of different. Uh, uh, wire strippers on hand because you're going to be using uh, uh, different gauges of wire. Okay, I'm just going to snip off, just going to leave a little bit hanging out at the other end of the, uh, the terminal there and then snip off the rest of, rest of the wire so it doesn't get caught up on anything. And then as you can see there's a, you got a good solder joint on each one. And uh, if you need to, you could just uh, hold on to the terminal and just push. Usually, there's enough play in the insulation where you could just push the insulation back up over top. Okay. Now we're ready to, to mount this into place, and then uh, uh, the, the other end, I'm just going to put it on to a little uh, couple of terminals underneath the layout, and then run a, another wire over to the uh, feeds for the track and then we'll be good to go for that side. I have my switch in place right here and I'm just gonna put it close to where I think I'm gonna need it. Okay, about right there. And I'm gonna try to bring the, the gate up, put it into position. Okay, and just make sure that uh, I hit the switch. Okay, so that looks like about right right there, so just enough to flip the switch right there. So what I'm going to do is just hold that in place, and normally I would use an awl, but the awl is a little bit too thick to go in there, so I'm going to try to hit the, the center of this hole with my pin vise. Okay, and then start a hole right there, and then move it over to the other side. And I got a little bit of wiggle room here, if I make a mistake. So I got the two, two holes started right there. I'm just going to go a little bit further in with the pin vise. And I got my number four screws right here. Okay. So that might be might be deep enough. So what I'll do is I'll just start the first one right here. I'll get my screwdriver. And I, you know, you feel for, you can feel where the hole is with the screw already in there. Okay. And just to double check, I'll look down in there. Okay. So I'll just tighten this up, and I'm not going to tighten this up all the way. I'm just going to leave it a little bit loose. You always uh, leave your, your screws loose until you got them, all your screws started. Okay. I'll put that one right there. Now that's not going to move anywhere, just like that, but before I tighten it down all the way, I'm just going to bring the bridge up and make sure we make good contact on there. And I could hear it clicking, so that means we're in good shape. So I'll just go ahead and and tighten this up and I'm not going to tighten it down too much. I don't want to 
distort the switches in any. Now that we're finished with the uh, switch up on up on top, okay, we're gonna look down here at the terminal board underneath the track. Okay, these two wires right here are the feed for the bridge itself, and then these are the two that actually go out to the bridge. These two wires here, I already installed them on the terminal board. Those are the ones that go to the switch. Okay, now these go back to the to the area where I'm going to splice into it. Okay, I already stripped these out, and I'm using uh, the same colors because it's on a switch. I do that on uh, switches, and I do that on um, uh, reversing uh, sections also. All right, these these wires right here are the ones that I'm going to uh, splice into, and uh, it's going to be hard to to uh, uh, show this while I'm doing it. So um, I'm just going to cut these. Make sure that that's the right one. That's the right one. Okay, and I'm just going to cut it here. Then I'm going to strip it. Okay, and what I'm going to, here's the other two wires right here. Here is the. Uh, the splices that I made. Now I found these two wire nuts. Uh, I had them in my bin. I don't know how long I had them and I don't know where I got them. But here is the uh, the smallest one that I had previous to that. Now this, you know, you, you get the, the red ones, the yellow ones, the orange ones, and then the blue and the black ones usually for uh, maybe 18 gauge wire. But since this is 22, 20 or 22 gauge wire, I'm not really sure. I had to use the smaller ones, and I don't know where I got them. I had them a long time, so I wish I knew where I got them so I can get some more, but uh, maybe somebody can help me out there and let me know about it. All right, everything is wired up to this point right here. Uh, we're good to go. Here's what the final connection looks like on the bottom, on, on the, uh, on the uh, swing side of the bridge. Okay, now we're ready to go to the opposite side. Okay, as you can see, I have the switch here ready to go. Uh, have the screws in it. What I did was I uh, cut a groove in the cork right here because the the uh, switch is. I'm, let me move the screws out of the way a little bit because the uh, switch is going right on the end of that piece of plywood right there. I'm going to run the wires in that little groove so that the switch is going to go right around it, right around in this area right here and the wires are going to go back here. All right, here's soldering phase two. What I'm going to do on, the, on this side, uh, on the other side, uh, I got some stranded wire because I had this out, I had the uh, red wire out for, just for um, running the, the wires from the switch over to the, uh, where I had the lead at. So what I did was I put a little bit of, put a little bit of flux on the wire and I'm just gonna heat up the wire. I don't know if you can see this here. I'll do it this way here. Heat up the wire and put some solder on it. And then it's just enough. Well, that wasn't quite just enough. Just enough to coat the, the strands on the wire. This is a stranded wire here, so just enough to coat it. So I'll do the other one here. Camera's in the odd position here. And there we go, we got the flux on there. Okay, so both of those wires are done. All right, there's the switch, okay, with the two wires soldered on there, and I just snipped off the edges. And we could just bend these up out of the way for right now. And basically, it's gonna be sitting here. I should have put them in from the other, the opposite side, and because the, the wires are going here, but that's that's something you learn while, when you're doing something, but that's okay because it's gonna be up against the plywood anyway, and it'll, it'll give me a chance to just bend it like like that and fit it into the into the groove. So here we go. In order for me to uh, be able to install this switch right here, I'm gonna to have to remove uh, this block right here. So 
I mean, it's just in there with uh, with two screws, so I'll just. Uh... Okay, where else do I have it? In there. Okay, I must have glued it a little bit too. Okay, so now I have access to it. I'll be able to put my screwdriver in there and uh, install the switch right there. As you can see, I have my bridge in place, and that's where I where it needs to be. And I'll make sure that. Uh, I have a little bit of wiggle room in here, but I'll bring this right over here, and I'll make sure I have to make sure it clears the edge, and bring it down just where I could hear it clicking. And what I'll do is I'll mark the plywood right there. Do it the same way I did it with the other one. On this one here, I'm gonna I'm gonna start one screw, the back screw, so I could pivot this. Now that I have the first screw started, I brought this back up into position, and I noticed that I'm gonna have to shave a little bit of the uh, the uh, hardboard just to give it a little bit more clearance because it, uh, it it's coming up too close to the the side of the switch. I have my bridge in position and um, the first screw in the switch and I have it up just a little bit so what I'm going to do is just push it down just a little bit and I have it snug enough to where it's going to stay there so that that looks about level and the switch is already made so and just to get the screw started I'm going to move this out of the way and I'm going to mark the screw screw hole with my pin vise just to get a little bit of a thread started on it. I mean this is a little bit smaller than what I would normally do to start a screw but it'll, it'll get it going. And what I had to do to accommodate this was I had to shave a little bit more off of here and then I had to shave a little bit off of the hardboard that was on the uh, bridge itself just to get the, uh, the switch in into position snug right there so we're going to test fit it bring the bridge up bring the latch back and there we go I can hear it clicking right there and along the way you know I, I cut my thumb so excuse the little bit of the blood right there and it, and it wobbles a little bit because I have have this one block out of the, the guide block out of the way so once I put that guide block in there it'll be a nice clean fit. Before I run my uh, switch or my wires down to the bottom I'm just going to test the uh, switch to make sure it works. You know it'd be uh, funny that uh, you know the switch would malfunction and you know you get it all set up so okay so when you hit the little lever you got continuity through the hole. I drilled the hole through there so I could bring it down to the bottom. I fit it into the uh, groove up on top and have them right here. I, I have them a little bit long just to, you know, I always cut things a little bit long just in case. Okay, I already have this set up over here. I got the terminals right here for for the uh, for the white wire on the uh, track power. So all I have to do is just put one wire in each one of these terminals. And over here, I'm gonna have a Digitrack UP5 facing right here. So these are the, the wires for the track power. And, and, I'll, and I have some extra wires here. I used to have two tracks up on the top, so I just left, left those there. But all I have to do is connect these two together and uh, we'll have uh, the switch on this side operational. Okay, I got it all hooked up right now and uh, I'm just gonna double check it. I'm gonna put the leads of my meter right here. And then flip the switch. And see, we got continuity, so we got it working there. All right, here's the, here's the top again. Uh, Here's where the bridge comes up. I got my light in the way, maybe. I might not be able to get this. Uh, here we go. All right, I got this up into place. 
I didn't put the other block in here yet. Okay, so I'm going to go back and I'm not really going to cut it right now because I want to ballast the track first. And that's the last step. So basically what I'm going to do right here, uh, this is going to be the end of the trestle right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'll cut a gap in this track right here. But I want to make sure it's good and solid because I hate to, I hate to cut gaps when it's just, um, you know, the flex track. Uh, I want a more uh, substantial surface on it so where I know nothing's going to move. You know, I've, I've tried uh, pinning the track and everything and, and it just doesn't, doesn't work. I mean, I, you just have to have a nice solid surface and then, you know, you cut the gap in there and you'll be good to go. You don't want to have to worry about anything where it moves or anything like you won't have any derailments. Okay, here's the final test on the one end. I got the bridge down, I got my my locomotive over here. Let's put the bridge up. Okay, we got lights. We got action. Okay, now that we cleared the bridge, I'm going to drop the bridge down and we'll watch it stop. And there we go, success. We got success on both sides. And off into the distance. And we're on our way back in reverse. We're going to speed it up just a little bit.
you've seen all the operation of putting together these two switches on the uh, drop down uh, bridge. Uh, we've run the locomotive through there and um, that one locomotive is the reason why I've changed so many things on this layout because no matter what I did, it wouldn't work going through this area right here. All right, I hope you enjoyed the movie, and uh, we'll see you next time. Don't And don't forget to, okay, we're going to subscribe right here where Maddie's hat is, okay? So we'll subscribe right there. Okay, we'll see you. Say bye. Bye-bye.